We are tasked with finding all pairs of positive integers, n and p, that satisfy three conditions. First, p must be a prime number. Second, and cannot exceed 2 times p. Third, the expression p minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 must be divisible by n to the power of p minus 1. This is the central divisibility condition. Our analysis will revolve around its consequences. A standard approach in number theory is to first test the simplest cases. We will begin with n equals 1. The condition becomes 1 to the power of p minus 1 must divide p minus 1 plus 1. Now, let's simplify both sides of this statement. The left side, 1 to any positive integer power, is simply 1. The right side simplifies to p. The condition reduces to 1 divides p. This is true for any integer p. Since the problem requires p to be prime, this condition is always met. We must also verify the second condition, that n is less than or equal to 2p. For n equals 1, this becomes 1 is less than or equal to 2p, which holds for any prime p. Thus, the pair 1 comma p is a solution for any prime p. This constitutes an infinite family of solutions. The prime 2 is unique, so it often requires separate analysis. Let's examine the case where p equals 2. The expression becomes n to the power of 2 minus 1 must divide 2 minus 1 to the power of n plus 1. This simplifies to n must divide 1 to the n plus 1. First, we evaluate the power on the right-hand side. Since n is a positive integer, 1 to the power of n is 1. The condition reduces to n must divide 2. Since n is a positive integer, the only possibilities are n equals 1 or n equals 2. The case n equals 1 yields the pair 1 comma 2, which belongs to the family of solutions we already found. The case n equals 2 gives a new potential solution, the pair 2 comma 2. We must check this pair against the second condition. Substituting n equals 2 and p equals 2 gives, 2 is less than or equal to 2 times 2. This inequality is true. Therefore, the pair 2 comma 2 is a valid solution. We have now found a second distinct solution. Now we address the general case. P is an odd prime, and n is greater than 1. Let Q be the smallest prime divisor of n. This element is key to constraining the properties of n. So, Q must divide P minus 1 to the power of n plus 1. We can express this divisibility as a congruence. p minus 1 to the power of n is congruent to negative 1, modulo u. To analyze this, we can square both sides of the congruence. This gives us that p minus 1 to the power of 2 n is congruent to 1, modulo q. This structure suggests the use of Fermat's little theorem, which relates powers of an integer to a prime modulus. By Fermat's little theorem, for any integer a not divisible by a prime q, we have a to the power of q minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo q. If q does not divide p minus 1, this congruence holds. Let's assume for contradiction that q does divide p minus 1. Then p minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo q. Substituting this into our original congruence leads to 0 to the is congruent to negative 1 modulo q. This implies that q must divide 1, but q is a prime number, so this is impossible. Therefore, our assumption was false, and q does not divide p minus 1. The theorem can be safely applied. We now know that the multiplicative order of p minus 1 modulo q must divide both 2n and q minus 1. Since p minus 1 to the n is negative 1, the order cannot divide n. This implies the order must be an even number, which in turn means q minus 1 must be even. If 2 divides q minus 1, then q must be an odd prime. Consider the implication. We have shown that the smallest prime factor of n must be odd. Consequently, all prime factors of n must be odd. This means n itself must be an odd number. 
This is the first critical deduction for the case of odd primes, and must be odd. Now we introduce a powerful tool, p-adic valuation. This will be the key to further constraining the problem. The p i valuation of k, denoted v sub p of k, is the exponent of the highest power of the prime p that divides k. For example, v sub 3 of 18 is 2 because 18 equals 2 times 3 squared. In terms of valuation, this is written as v sub p of n to the power of p minus 1 is less than or equal to v sub p of the quantity p minus 1 to the n plus 1. Using a property of valuations, we can bring the exponent down, simplifying the left side. To analyze the right side, we will apply the lifting the exponent lemma. Since an is odd, plus 1 is equivalent to minus negative 1 to the n. We can apply the lifting the exponent lemma because p is an odd prime. p divides the base difference p minus 1 minus negative 1, which is pc, and the exponent n is odd. The lemma states the valuation of the sum of powers equals the valuation of the sum of bases plus the valuation of the exponent. Applying the lemma gives us v sub p of i plus v sub p of n. Since the highest power of p that divides p is p to the 1, v sub p of p is just 1. The right side simplifies to 1 plus v sub p of n. Now we substitute this back into our inequality. This substitution yields a powerful new inequality. To simplify, we gather all terms involving v sub p of n on one side. We subtract v sub p of n from both sides. Factoring out v sub p of n, we arrive at this simple constraint. The problem's complexity has been reduced significantly. Since p is an odd prime, p is at least 3, so p minus 2 is at least 1. And v sub p of n is a non-negative integer. This leaves very few possibilities. This inequality splits our search into two distinct cases. Case A. v sub p of n equals 0. This satisfies the inequality as p minus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 1. Case B. v sub on p of n equals 1. For the inequality to hold, p minus 2 must be less than or equal to 1, which forces p to be 3. These cases are exhaustive. If v sub p of n were 2 or greater, the inequality p minus 2 times 2 is at most 1 would be impossible for any prime p greater than or equal to 3. Therefore, only these two cases can occur. Let's investigate case A. V sub p of n equals 0 means that p is not a prime factor of n, they are co-prime. This gives us the same congruence. p minus 1 to the n is congruent to negative 1 modulo q. Let d be the multiplicative order of p minus 1 modulo q. The congruence implies that d must divide 2n, but d cannot divide n. Here is the critical insight. The definition of q as the smallest prime factor of n is a powerful constraint. This means no prime number smaller than q can be a factor of n. We also know from Fermat's little theorem that the order d must divide q minus 1. So d divides both q minus 1 and 2n. Consider an odd prime factor rr of d. Since d divides q minus 1, r must be less than q. But since d divides 2n, r must divide n. This is a contradiction, as no prime less than q can divide n. Therefore, d cannot have any odd prime factors. This forces d to be a power of 2. Thus, d must be either 1 or 2. However, d cannot be 1. If it were, p minus 1 would be congruent to 1 modulo q, which would contradict our congruence. The only possibility is d equals 2. This implies p minus 1 is congruent to negative 1 modulo q, which means p is divisible by q. But this is a contradiction. q is a prime factor of n, so if q also divides p, then n and u cannot be coprim, 
which violates the premise of case A. This contradiction shows that case A is impossible. There are no solutions where V sub EP of n equals zero. This leaves only case B. Here, P must be three and V sub three of n must be one. This means n is a multiple of three, but not of nine. We can write n as three times k, where k is not divisible by three. Since n is odd, k must also be odd. This is the condition. We substitute the values from this case. n equals 3k and p equals 3. Substituting these values gives the inequality. 3k is less than or equal to 2 times 3. The right-hand side simplifies to 6. To find the possible values for k, we isolate it. Dividing both sides by 3 yields. RAQ is less than or equal to 2. We know k must be a positive odd integer not divisible by 3, and k is at most 2. The only integer satisfying all these conditions is k equals 1. Substituting k equals 1 back into the definition and equals 3k gives n equals 3. This yields our final candidate solution, the pair 3 comma 3. All that remains is to verify this pair. Does 3 squared divide 2 cubed plus 1? The question is, does 9 divide 8 plus 1? Simplifying the right side, we get 9 divides 9. This is true. The pair is a valid solution. We have found our third and final type of solution. Let us summarize the results of our analysis. After exploring all cases, we found three distinct sets of solutions. First, the infinite family of pairs 1, P for any prime P. Second, the special pair 2, 2, arising from the unique properties of the only even prime. And third, the pair 3, 3, discovered through the p-adic valuation analysis that restricted this possibility to p equals 3. Let's reflect on the key mathematical techniques that made this solution possible. The minimal prime divisor argument was critical for eliminating case A. By considering the smallest prime factor q of n, we forced the multiplicative order to be a power of 2, which led to a contradiction. The lifting the exponent. Lemma, combined with p-adic valuations, transformed a complex divisibility condition into a simple inequality. This split the problem into manageable cases. Multiplicative order theory, supported by Fermat's Little Theorem, provided the foundational tools for analyzing the congruences and revealing deep structural constraints on the variables. A seemingly complex problem yielded its solutions through a systematic breakdown into logical cases. The rigorous application of established theorems shows how structure and strategy lead to a complete and certain mathematical truth. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into number theory, please like and subscribe for more content like this.